Hello HP Touchpad users, great news! Today I'm going to help you troubleshoot problems installing the latest versions of Android on the HP Touchpad and talk a little bit about bricking. Just look for a timecode in the video's description if you want to skip ahead. Located at both the Roots Wiki and the XDA Developers Forums is my super easy way ROM guide. This will teach you how to install the latest versions of Android onto the HP Touchpad with JC Sullen's latest and greatest creation, the Touchpad Toolbox. Please refer to this guide for all the latest information and I of course list all the ROMs that are available at the time and I update it. Here's my video links all the different ROMs and all the information about each ROM, little fixes and notes as well. Now people have been having some problems with installing with the touchpad toolbox. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the background on that which will help us understand why. Now you can find links to JC Sullen's original thread at the top of all of my threads. Stop on by and give him thanks for his incredible creation. He provides it to us for free and supports it. Come check it out. Now here in his thread he has version 40 currently listed as the current version. Now each version has specific other files that must be used with it. Now we will get to this. If you scroll down you'll see the recoveries that are compatible with this version of the touchpad toolbox. As you will note only certain ROMs will be able to be flashed with this touchpad toolbox version. Now it's been said that you can simply rename other ROMs if you want to install them, just rename them to a compatible version. However, I know this can be a little confusing because a newer version, actually a couple newer versions of the touchpad toolbox are now available. In post 293, JC Sullins gives us the latest version 41 of the touchpad toolbox and separate from version 40, there is a different list of recoveries that are available for this version. Now this version is not as selective about the naming system so you can install all of the ROMs but you still have to use these listed recoveries for this version of the touchpad toolbox. And in addition in his testing folder he has some additional versions C and D here that are available. So I know this can be confusing to people because there are several versions. Now to help clear this up I've listed them all in my threads and there is notes about each version and links to JC Sullen's thread of course. But you'll want to make a big note about these separate recoveries. Now you will check right here and see which recovery works with which version of the touchpad toolbox and you'll need to have the right version. So this is one very important issue people have been having is using the wrong recovery and it refuses to flash that with the touchpad toolbox or perhaps you're using version 40 which doesn't flash all of the ROMs available. For instance one of the newer ROMs Team EOS which is a great ROM available won't be flashed by version 40 but can be flashed by version 41. Now I'll try to note this and keep these up to date in my guide for you. Additionally I've heard a few reports of the touchpad toolbox refusing to flash corrupted files so sometimes you download a file that becomes corrupted during the download process and the touchpad toolbox recognizes and refuses to flash it. In this case you'll just need to re-download the file if you've checked and you're certain it's listed in the guide is compatible with your version of the toolbox definitely try to re-download and reflash that file. That's been one very important note about the touchpad toolbox. Now moving on to problems with the touchpad toolbox interface. I've heard about additional problems with the touchpad toolbox not working with the volume button when you need to navigate and actually go through the menu system. Now, I've heard a few reports of that happening when you get here in the touchpad toolbox menu uh, you're trying to go up and down with the volume buttons and nothing happens. Uh, another common problem is it not connecting to the device. Now I'm not sure about the cause of that. Uh, most of these things are unclear what is going on if it's the device or connections or perhaps drivers. 
In some cases of scrolling up and down, people got the newer versions of the touchpad toolbox and this fixed one of the problems. If you can't connect it, you should always try going back to step one and reinstalling the Novacom software. Uh, now you want to make sure your antivirus isn't blocking the installation of this software because sometimes that happens and it doesn't get installed properly It may download drivers from the internet. So if you might try some of these, I'd always recommend, of course, going to J.C. Sullen's thread and posting in the forum, especially if you have permission. I know it's in the development thread, uh, but you can post in the Q&A thread or if you're new or over at Roots Wiki. It's always good to ask questions if you're stuck. Don't just go flashing things if you don't know what they are or if you have questions about the procedure. Of course, come and check it out. Thank him. Donate to him. We want to keep up this great work on the touchpad. Now, if we are unable for any reason to use the touchpad toolbox to interface with our device, there are still other methods we can use. I have two older guides for installing data media builds onto the HP touchpad without using the touchpad toolbox. Now, this also works for newer 4G versions. That's right, Evervolve is making a 4G version for the touchpad, and it can only be installed currently using this method but this will also work for all the currently available Android 4.4 ROMs. You can check it out here. I have links to it in both the Roots Wiki and XDA developers forums. And it'll take you step by step through installing without the touchpad toolbox. Now this install method is a little bit longer, takes a little bit more effort and time, but if you can't get anywhere with the touchpad toolbox, this is what you should do. Last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bricking and boot loop fixes. Now in all of my guides, I usually have a troubleshooting section at the bottom. You scroll all the way down and look for it. It might be in the second post in some instances when I've run out of space. It's multiple pull-down menus. Now bricking and boot loop fixes. A few times I've had the touchpad seem to run out of batteries when it's around 20 to 30%. It just turns off, I plug it into the wall, into the computer, and there's no response. It's very confusing. Now I found that if I hold down the power and the home button together for up to 30 seconds, it might turn itself back on, and then I can boot it and charge it up. Also, you can hold down the power button and hit the home button 15 times and try that as well. Now, this might not work for everyone, but there have been a lot of cases where this will turn the touchpad on, or at least get it to the point where you can charge it if it's completely out of batteries. Try it, it's worth a try. Uh, another common problem is the actual cable stops working or the charger. This happened in many cases, especially the cable that comes with it is often defective or the micro USB in the bottom. Now always check all those things, but if it absolutely won't turn on at all, there's always the touchpad D-Brick by J.C. Sullins, of course. You come check this out here and give J.C. Sullins thanks again. Now, if a completely bricked tablet, this is what you do. You only do it in the instance that it's totally bricked. So come check this out if you believe it's totally bricked. And now a boot loop. So a boot loop is when the tablet just keeps rebooting. You keep seeing the uh, boot animation going over and over and over again. It seems to be cycling. You can't get out of it. Uh, sometimes you may have Mooboot still installed and you can get into Clockwork Mod still. So again, these first options here, if you're in the boot loop and it keeps going over and over and over, do any of these to turn it off and on, get it back on, and go into the recovery, and you can reflash the ROM and GFs package. You can also use a backup if you have one available. Now I have additional guides at uh, Roots Wiki and XDA that will show you how to flash ROMs which is basically what you're going to need to do to fix a boot loop. You'll basically need to reflash the ROM and the GFs package and we'll fix everything. And here's my video that will teach you how to reflash the ROM and GFs package for a clean install. That's how you get out of the boot loop as long as you have Mooboot installed. Otherwise you'll need to uninstall and reinstall everything. Of course I have videos that'll teach you how to do that as well. Now there may be additional problems you have, but don't fear, we can try to sort some of those out for you. Don't forget to post in the forums and check out the latest issues. Uh, now one extra problem I should probably note, a very recent thing that was mentioned, is the end of WebOS. 
Uh, I have some recent posts and a video about it. Web OS is ending. All the support will be done by January 15th. So if you've recently wiped the tablet completely or run the Web OS Doctor, you might be in a situation where you cannot activate the device, in which case you may need to use the touchpad toolbox to eliminate Web OS and just install Android. So this may be a future problem if it's after January 15th, 2015. Please subscribe to see the latest updates. I'll try to keep you up to date on the latest issues, problems, solutions, troubleshooting. And of course, check out my forum threads. There's a lot of information here. There's a lot of support information, tweaks, fixes, how to get flash support running, Netflix, things like that, common fixes and smaller issues. Lots of helpful and useful information. I highly recommend it just going through all this. And of course, subscribe to see the latest videos. As long as the HP touchpad has support, I'll teach you what to do, how to keep it updated, and keep on going. Of course, thanks all our talented developers like JC Sullins. We want to donate once in a while to show our appreciation for their hard work. And of course, thanks to everyone for watching, subscribing. Please like the video so more people will see it. Thanks for watching, everybody.